In this video, we're going to learn how to use a rubber duck to improve our debugging skills with a technique called rubber duck debugging. This video is part of a series of videos aimed at helping beginner programmers with tips and tricks to improve their programming skills. So how can a rubber duck possibly improve our ability as a programmer? There's actually a simple technique that's used by everyone from beginner programmers to experienced software developers to help them figure out what's wrong with their program when they're experiencing a bug of some kind that they can't figure out. It's called rubber duck debugging, and it works like this. You first find a rubber duck, and then you place it on your desk. You then tell the rubber duck what your code is supposed to do, and then you explain the code line by line to the duck. And as ridiculous as it might sound, you'll very often find that as you're explaining your code to the duck, you suddenly realize why your code isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing. Now you might've already experienced this even if you've never used rubber duck debugging, so have you ever tried to explain a problem you're having with your code to a friend or fellow student or colleague? And as you're explaining the problem, you're actually able to figure it out. You might've experienced this even with problems that have nothing to do with code. Rubber duck debugging essentially works for the same reason, except we don't need a person around. We can use something as silly as a rubber duck to help us out. But why does rubber duck debugging work? When we write programs, bugs often occur because of a difference between what the code is supposed to do and what it does. And when I say what the code is supposed to do, I mean what we want the code to do, our intention for what the code should do. Rubber duck debugging helps us to recognize this difference between what the code is supposed to do and what it actually does. When we write computer programs, we often have an idea for how it's supposed to work. We might express that idea using written language or pseudocode or flowcharts, or we might just keep that general abstract idea for how the program is supposed to work in our own mind. Then when we go to implement and express that idea using code, we very often make mistakes. And it's this sort of difference that rubber duck debugging will often help us identify. Because of this, the technique tends to be most effective when we know what we need to do, but for some reason that we don't understand, it's not working. It may not be a helpful technique if we just don't know what to do at all. There's other strategies that may be more effective if we're trying to figure out what to do at all. As far as why it works psychologically, I actually wish that there was more peer-reviewed academic research on rubber duck debugging that I could reference in this video, but there are some people that have effectively described some of the reasons why it works. David Hayes wrote an article on the psychology underlying the power of rubber duck debugging, and he gave two reasons why it works. The first reason is that saying something out loud forces us to slow down and be really precise compared to when we're thinking or typing up the code itself. So David says, first off, you're likely to slow down and be more exacting than you are when you're really power typing code. Most of us think way faster than we talk. So especially if you're verbally explaining what's going on to this other object, you're likely to be a bit more careful and precise just by virtue of that speed bump of saying it all. The second reason is that because we're talking to a rubber duck, we're going to really explain things in a very specific, thorough, and low-level way that forces us to think through the problem. So David says, when you're assuming the ignorance of your rubber duck, you're having to explain more thoroughly and exactly than you were likely thinking those specific lines of code through in your head. And that's really the key. Rubber duck debugging forces us to think about our own thought process and our own approach to solving a problem, which is something we might not naturally do on our own. There's something called metacognition, which is when we think about our own thoughts and thought processes. And in education, there's things called metacognitive strategies, which are learning techniques that make us aware of our own thinking. Metacognitive strategies are extremely popular in literacy education. For example, students are told that as they read a book, they should ask themselves certain questions about the book. And it turns out when students do this, they're able to understand the book better. In education in general, there are many metacognitive strategies out there, and there's an abundance of research available that shows us that these strategies can be very effective. Rubber duck debugging is essentially a type of metacognitive strategy for computer programming that makes us think about our own thought process for how to solve a problem and compare it against our implementation of the solution. And that awareness of our own thinking is what allows us to spot the difference between what the code is supposed to do and what it does. Now, of course, it doesn't really need to be a rubber duck that we use. It really could be any object. The term rubber duck debugging comes from a story in the famous book, The Pragmatic Programmer, which by the way is a book I highly recommend that new programmers read. So you could really use anything around your house or your office. I've heard that some people use rubber duck debugging by talking to their pets. Other people will tell you that this will be way too distracting. Maybe it depends on the pet you've got. Now it's not always possible to talk out loud, 
Maybe people in our home are asleep and we don't want to wake them up. Or we just don't want to look weird by talking to a rubber duck at the office or the library. One variation of rubber duck debugging that I really like is to write an email to a friend describing what your code is supposed to do and then going over it line by line. This way, we don't need to talk out loud. But at the same time, typing out our thoughts like this has a similar effect where it really forces us to slow down and think about our own thought process. I've actually found that typing out my own thoughts is more helpful than saying them out loud because I'm able to look at what I wrote after I've typed it out. So you may want to try it this way instead. And so this is how we can use a rubber duck to improve our debugging skills. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.